You guys have been asking for this tutorial for a long time, so I'm excited to dive into editing real life photos inside of Viewforge to get something that is relatively good. Now, before we dive into the tutorial though, I want to be upfront with you that editing real life photos can be tricky inside of Viewforge. And so we're gonna walk through some do's and don'ts, especially if we're working with your own photography. And then we're gonna jump into an example image to give you some, some ideas on how I would process an image in Hueforge. Um, but just know this is how I would do it. There are lots of ways to do things in Hueforge. And so do your research, find some other people, and hopefully as you combine all of our knowledge together, you will get something super good. So to start a couple of things when it comes to Hueforge and real life photos. Real life photos are really a step up from your normal kind of just uh, vector kind of 2D images because real photos have depth on them. And if you're working with a relatively good camera or good photographer, a lot of times those photos will have bokeh on them. And bokeh is just that really blurry background that you get behind whatever the subject is. You see this a lot in wedding photography and things like that. I have a whole tutorial on my Patreon about wedding photography and how to edit those real life photos. So if you're interested, go check out the Patreon. Link will be down there in the description below. Today, we're going to be working with photos that don't have bokeh, primarily because bokeh can confuse Hueforge and working with blurry backgrounds inside of Hueforge is more on the advanced side of Hueforge. And so I will save that tutorial for my Patreon. We talk about lots of advanced stuff over there, but today we're gonna to be looking at an image that has virtually no bokeh. When we look at landscape photography specifically is where we see this kind of put on display. There's still some depth in the photo, but we don't have that blurry background that can sometimes trip us up. So I'm going to go ahead, hop into Hueforge. You're going to see the finished image, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you, and then we're gonna to work together to get a standard mode version and a color match version, all right? So you're gonna see the finished version so that we know what we're working towards, and then we'll dive right in. Let's slide over there. Okay, so we are inside of Hue Forge, and I'm going to move myself up here, down here. You know what? I don't need to be that large. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put myself right up here, a little bit smaller. I'm sorry. Um, actually, no, you're welcome. Um, you get to see the whole screen here. Now, this is the image that we're working with. This image works particularly well for a couple of reasons. One, there is a bright, bold primary color that we don't have to blend. This red is very bright, it's very good, and we don't have to blend it to make it look good. And so that is, it's very good for color match. Outside of the red barn, we have this kind of, I would say like brown, green, fall kind of background. And this works really in our advantage as well because these colors, these tones work really well together. We can blend from like a brown, like a light tan into a green fairly easily, incorporating some red, some oranges. That's not difficult at all. And then we have our blue sky, which looks gorgeous. So this is our finished image here. This is what I, I would get when I color match this image. Now you'll see that my image here on the left is a little bit different than the image on the right. And you're gonna have to be okay with that. No one is ever going to see this image here on the right. When you print it out, you sell it at a market, you put it up in your house, no one's going to know that the image on the right was the one that you were trying to match. And so all of the imperfections that you see, I promise you no one else will see. So this is the image that I got here. There are some things that I really like about this image, and there are some things that I don't love about this image. Um, particularly the things that I'm not in love with is just this kind of shadow here. You can see that there's a shadow of the tree kind of in this image, and the shadow is kind of coming in more so as a gray than as a, um, as a shadow. And so there are some things that will be particularly difficult. The things that I love is the foliage. I love the trees in the background. Typically, this is a really hard effect to get done correctly inside of Hueforge, and I love the sky and the clouds. They look really, really good. So we are going to hop into standard mode. And we're going to walk through just a simple edit that I really like for this image. Uh, know that you can get really cool effects in standard mode. No, it's not going to look like the photo that you took. 
um, but you can get some really neat effects. And so I was playing around with this image inside of um, standard mode and you can get something really cool. So I dragged in this bamboo lab. I believe this is the matte. Uh, this is the maroon red that I dragged in. It matches this barn red very, very well. And this image looks pretty cool, um, but I realized that there was a problem here. I had my black, I had my red, I had my white, but the blue, if I drag it in for the sky, just doesn't, it doesn't look good. I don't like it. Um, the sky is, is not coming through because the gray down here and the grass and the gray up here in the sky is the same. And so Hue Forge is going to put whatever color is right here, both down here and up here. And so I was thinking, what can I use to get depth in the sky and to get depth in the grass that's not going to be a strong color that's going to make it look awful? When I'm thinking like that, it's a high TD beige. That's the color that comes to my mind first. And so if we drag this in here and we bring it up a little bit, Bring, we'll keep the black maybe right there. I'm gonna bring the brightness down actually. It's gonna make me, uh, my brightness is really high. There we go. Now you can see here that we have this really cool effect and the beige accomplishes a lot of work for us. One, it adds a lot of nice depth to the sky. Um, it, it gives the almost like a sunset kind of overcast kind of vibe to it. Um, but we also get the depth in the grass that I was looking for as well. On top of, we get some depth up here in the tree. So it looks really, really good. I really like the way this image looks. You can accomplish something really cool with four colors inside of standard mode if you know how to blend the colors together. And so this is not a standard mode tutorial. I have one of those, check it out, it's on my channel. But this looks really good. You should be happy with a print like this. If you're just starting out in Hue Forge and this is the result that you get, you should be happy. This looks really, really good. Now we're gonna go into color match. Now color match will cause us a couple of issues and it actually has to do with the photo that I brought in. You can see here that this photo has like some grain here in the windows. And you can see here that, you know, the window's not looking good. I don't know if this is AI generated. It definitely looks maybe like chat GBT kind of generated. Um, especially this down here. Um, I just picked this image off of Pinterest to practice with. Um, I'll put a link to this image maybe in the in the description below so you can practice on it as well. But you can definitely tell that this is, uh, yeah, this is definitely AI generated. You can tell whatever this thing is up here. This is not centered properly, um, different colors up here. And so color matching this is going to be difficult because the image has this grain on it. And Color match is not gonna like that. Color match is not going to love the fact that there's a ton of grain on this image, but we're gonna give it a shot. And you saw that we can get a pretty good effect on our color match. And so you come in here, we are going to restore defaults here. It's going to look awful. Um, we're gonna come into color match. What I'm going to do quickly is drag in that image again so that we get that aspect ratio um, looking good. And then I'm going to go ahead and start color matching this. Now, you can see that we have some things going on here that we definitely want to make sure are included in our mesh core. Um, we have this bright red, and we know that we're going to have to include some darker reds to blend up to. We have the brown on the shingles, this gray on the shingles. We have our orange, tans, greens that we need to include, and then we need our whites. And so I'm going to get rid of our gray there for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and add our blend depth. We have a lot of colors going on here. So I know I'm going to need more layers to play around with. Let's go maybe like a 2.48. Uh, no, we'll bring it down a little bit and do like a 2.32. Okay, so we have 35 layers to play around with. I'm going to go ahead and snag our red. And I'm going to place the red somewhere at like maybe there. We get the nice just red gradient going on. Um, I'm going to take more of a dark red, maybe down here, and just put it down there so we get the blending that we want with the reds on the shed. Then the next thing that I really want to nail down is probably like this full foliage in the trees and the grass. And we know that I, I want this to maybe be built on top of the red. Um, and they, this chunk of kind of building on top of each other it needs to be together so i'm going to start with a let's do like this 
like mid-tone green here. Oh, mid-tone green there. There we go. Something like that. Maybe something a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more accurate to the green on the grass there. And then we're going to grab something more tan and put it above it there. Something like that. And then I'm going to grab maybe like a, yeah, something like that. Okay, so now we're getting some more definition here in the gray. I'm actually going to bring maybe that down a little bit. This kind of darker color might actually be best suited to go down at the bottom. And we might just replace it with like one of those grays for now. Um, and then we'll use like a desert tan or something down there. Okay. I don't mind the way that that's looking. This color probably needs to be more of like a... Uh, more. It needs to be a little bit lighter. The reason being is because these are going to be on our base layer. And so I kind of want, actually, we'll stick with this color for now. We'll see how that looks um, because we need that on the shingles for sure. That's basically the same. You can see, okay, maybe something like that. There we go. Yeah, something like that. And you can see that we need more of these like darker colors there for the leaves primarily because it was picking up some gray. We don't want gray to be in our leaves. And then we'll come down here, this color. This is a really dark color in the leaves. And so we may want to put it somewhere down here. And then if you press control on your keyboard and use your middle scroll wheel and just slide up, it will bring all of these layers up just a little bit for us. Cool. So we're getting somewhere with this image. Now we need to play around with the sky. Um, I definitely want to get our blue in here just so that it's up there because it's going to make the image feel a lot better than what it is currently. Now we have a couple problems, primarily with the foliage here in the background and then with our shingles up here um, in, in the roof area. I'm going to first, before I start fixing this, I kind of want to go to my brightness adjust slider and just bring it up a little bit and just see what effects we get. I may even want to bring it down a little bit, something like that, um, to help bring out more of that foliage. We still need to work with some of the greens down here. Um, we're missing quite a lot of them. If I just take that gray out, actually that gray is doing a lot of harm for us. Um, do something like that. I definitely need maybe like a, a lighter gray to come in there at the bottom. One quick, very advanced tip that we can dive into later in a different tutorial. If you hold T on top, or if you press T on top of one of your fake filaments in your color match, you can use your scroll wheel to bring it up a little bit. And what it will do is it will actually change the TD value of your fake filament. That's gonna help you get some blending going on there so if we go back to one you see it's like very flat doesn't look very good but if we bring it up to like a yeah like a 2.5 we just get better blending on on that you press t to let go of it and that that does look um in my opinion a lot a lot better all right so we have our reds we the foliage up here is actually looking pretty good um the biggest problem that we need to kind of find a solution for is down down here in this area very like kind of gray looking it's not very good we have like this up here this like very dark red may actually come in handy let's just bring it down under so we have less of that black kind of poking through i might even snag a really dark red from this corner just to get a lot of that black kind of out of the way um, let's bring our layers up. Bring in that black. Okay. So now our barn is looking very nice. I realize this blend depth is going to have to come up a little bit. We're going to click up just a tad to get more layers to play around with. And now we are getting somewhere. Okay. Well, let's fix this kind of piece here. We need, I'm just going to replace this. 
a couple different colors and you can kind of tell that one of the big problems with this image is just how grainy it is. We can bring our brightness up to maybe like 0.11. You can see that actually it does, that does a lot of help for us with this image here. Actually, it did a lot of help, especially with this, uh, this overpass here. Um, these are different shades. And so Hue Forge is going to want different, uh, different layers or different colors kind of exposed for them. We're going to bring those layers up just a tad. I'll bring in another color here, kind of like that. I'm going to bring the TD up on it. So it's blending a little bit nicer. We're going to do the same thing kind of up here. It is ever so different, but you can already tell just the, the help that we're getting here. Um, with with the shingles and the like trim on this image. And what I'm doing right here is just kind of playing around with the colors that I've brought in. So that gray is, we, we see that that gray is very important because it's giving us that shading up top. We get something like this. Now you can tell that the first finished image that I brought in, the color, the mesh core looked very different than what it does right now. The mesh core um, is actually looking a bit more complex here now that we've worked through the image together. And uh, you can tell that it's going to look different every single time when you do it the the color match kind of method isn't where you copy me one for one to create an image that looks like this no it's for you to kind of go in and play around with the the sliders whatever color you grab on your image is going to be slightly different than the one that i grab on my image and so it's going to be a lot a lot of practice and as you look at this i'm going to be honest i'm going to be honest personally i like the image that we did in standard mode a little bit more than I like the color matched image. And that's typically the way that I prefer real life photography is to give it some, some kind of fun texture and kind of a, a more stylized version of it when I move it over to a Hue Forge. But as you can see, you can get something pretty one for one inside of Hue Forge if it is a real image. And so I hope this video was helpful for you. I know that, um, you know, we're not going to actually work on the color core. Also, this is something that I have reserved for my Patreon members. So if you want to learn how to blend these colors together, come check me out on Patreon. Um, the link is down there in the description for you so that you can find me and plug into our Hue Forge Pro community and learn Hue Forge alongside all of us. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. The tutorial piece of Hue Forge and Color Match is actually pretty difficult to make videos on. What I found is most helpful is to show you the process, the way that I think through the images. It's not sped up. That was all real time. It took me about 15 minutes. If you spend maybe an hour, two hours moving it around and playing around with it, you could get something even better than what I got here today on YouTube. Um, and so do that grab the image, toss it into color match, toss it into Hue Forge, and play around with the sliders for a significant amount of time. The reason that I don't upload an hour long version of this is because I don't think that would do very well on YouTube. But if that's what you want, let me know and we can definitely look at more of a long kind of process of getting a color matched image to be more one for one. Y'all, like I mentioned just a couple moments before, our Patreon community is growing. I do one-on-one -on -one Hue Forge coaching. And so if you're like, hey, Vic, I just need more one-on-one -on -one help, you can check that out. I offer it for free as a part of my Hue Forge Pro tier on Patreon. Or if you just want the coaching, you can also pay for that and sign up for that um, through the Discord, which will also be linked down in the description below. Huge shout out to all my patrons. You guys are the reason that I get to do this. Thank you for being here and supporting the work that I'm doing. And I hope that these small videos just get you closer and closer and closer to being able to create awesome Hue Forge prints on your own. Guys, thank you so much. And I will catch you guys in the next one, y'all. Until next time, take care.